what is it that, and what I keep hearing is that uh, people seem to be concerned about being arrested. And I understand that you got items listed that prohibit people from having any normal what would it actually take, I guess, the law enforcement to have for a person to actually be arrested? Because I keep hearing this, uh, if I do this, if I do that, I'm going to be arrested. So is there, uh, what, uh, based on prevention of ordinance, what specific a person can do that will lead them to be arrested? I know you, you think, you know, you, there's many things you can't put masks on and so on and on. But people are thinking that they stand outside and put down the where you have a incident on it, they can be arrested. So could you just give us a general idea of what are some of the things, specific things, that would cause you to be arrested? Well, to sit here with counsel and scenario based everything, I think would be very good. Well, I know. But I think we can, you know, I think we can generalize, you know. sure. I mean, First of all, I think we need to look at Florida as you know, a very welcoming state. It's full of tourism, it's full of visitors. We wouldn't survive the way we police now if we didn't have a very accommodating personality and tone and delivery of services. We wouldn't have the crime reduction we have today if we didn't have, if we didn't have relationships in the community. I mean, we hosted one of the biggest parades in the country. And, you know, we look to not have a rest. So it's, it's the same philosophy as this. We want people to enjoy coming to this event, sharing the First Amendment rights in a safe way, and to get arrested, you're gonna to have to go beyond the continuum of that and commit a crime. And that whether it be in the crime as a result of the ordinance, or a crime based on what's already on the state statute books, and or the federal uh, code, that's what's gonna get you arrested. And what everybody also needs to keep in mind is discretion. You know, we apply discretion every single day in criminal incidents for the greater good, and that's gonna be applied the same way. So it's just because the letter of the law is broken doesn't necessarily mean it will yield an arrest. Because the situation and the sanity check is going to be put on top of everything. In the way that we're training everybody, the way we're uh, deconflicting and giving information, we've probably spent 90% of our time looking for the health and the safety outside of the event area, not inside the event area. Most of this is going towards making sure people can exercise their, their freedom of speech, to have their message heard and be seen. All of the energy from the legal department, the administration, and the public safety groups have been centered on most of that because we understand the event comes with pretty much a template. So we're working diligently outside to make sure that people can come down, understand where the rules are, understand what the laws are, and stay within that framework and have a good time and, and also exercise their first amendment. And that's about as simple as general as I can put One final question. Uh, we, we realize we have a, a, a large young homeless population mm -hmm. that has been sitting in there, quite a few on the free the downtown area. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is another question that brought to my attention. And uh, you know, all of these people are my friends, you know, and, and, and they call me with the question. I have to reach out to me for the question. So I want to raise this. Uh, if normally when you see the homeless people uh, uh, or the CC that come in here for this location, they will have a problem with the moving about with their own personal belongings, bags, mm -hmm. those type of things. Sure. So the person in at Curtis Park, for example, and they will congregate at the park, and if they put their belongings down and walk a few feet somewhere else, were they to be confiscated and would be taken away from it and they won't have the opportunity to get all that back? Would that happen? Just in general, just in general. Yeah, well, I mean, let's let's get specific to the belongings. I mean, you know, reconciling people with their belongings, no matter what, whether it's a medical service or, you know, in, in the case of the criminal event, that's part of our obligation. We do that every day. We track property and we return property. Matter of fact, we've gone way out of our way in our planning to make sure that we use technology to make sure we reconcile people's property. And we're, things that we've never had before, we've built on top of our technology platform to make sure that that happens. But just in general, 
I mean, again, that's the sanity check in the way we police. We look at someone's situation in conjunction with the circumstances of how we come across that person and overlay that into the entire decision. And I'll tell you, the span of control of supervision is going to be way above normal, and the command control structure is way above normal, and all these things are going to be vetted to those processes before any decisions are made. Thank you, and I just want to commend the